Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online services here uh, at the Foundry. Our call to worship this morning comes from 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, and uh, this is what Peter says in his letter. He says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, we know it takes a lot of hard work to have this fulfilling life where we live up to your call and your command and where we can actually thrive in the knowledge of you and the love that you bring and the peace that you bring and all of that that we can turn to relationships with our brothers and sisters. We know it's a very difficult road and we have to work very hard and very diligently So we ask, Lord, that you come alongside us and give us that ability because we cannot do it without you. Inspire us so that we can show and share the kind of love that you created us to show. We want to be pleasing and honorable servants to you, Lord. So please come and help us do that. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children as that is who you are 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 oh that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working and even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your
your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, oh, you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Amen. 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 If you've got pain, well, he's a pain taker. And if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Good morning. Thank you once again for joining us today. And such a powerful message. The songs that we lifted up this morning. And I'd love to take this time to pray. Pray for our families. Pray for our community. Pray for our nation. Just pray for us as the body of Christ who are to be light and salt in this world, that we may continue to do that with effort, with courage, with boldness, especially in such a time as these. And so if you would please bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we have this opportunity to be in your house. Father, house, your house is not here in this temple, but is where we are as we lift our praises, as we lift our prayers, as we lift our petitions, as we lift our cry to you. Lord, as we gather in our homes, as we gather our families, those who have them around, Father, I pray that you speak to us today. Father, I pray that you teach us the calling that you have placed on each and every individual who belongs to the kingdom of God. Father, you are God who makes way. And Lord, today we need you to make ways that we have not seen before, to see that, yes, this is the way that God is making for us today. Lord, I pray that we may have eyes to see the grace 
that is at work in us, the grace that is at work in our community, the grace that is at work in our families. It's so easy to get lost in the fears and in the confusion and in the desperation of what our world is going through today. But I pray, Lord, that we may see, that we may have eyes to see how your grace is actively working, making way, breaking through in our lives and in our community. Father, I pray for healing in so many relationships, Lord, that either have gone astray, have been broken, or have been divided. Lord, you are a God who calls us into a ministry of reconciliation to reconcile not only people to you, but to reconcile with one another. And so, Father, we ask for healing in relationships with families, with friends, with loved ones, with brothers and sisters. Lord, we ask for your power to be seen not only in the miraculous ways that we see every day by seeing your faithfulness, but also in the simple ways of paying attention to the mercy that you show us every day and the faithfulness that you bring on to us every day. Heavenly Father, we pray for those with heavy hearts. We know there are so many people who are just seeing so much grief. Lord God, have mercy on us. I pray that you be with those who are trying to fight to give a voice to those who are voiceless, who are trying to fight for justice, who are trying to fight, Lord, to make your will be known in this world. I pray, Father, that you keep them safe, that you give them strength and wisdom. Father, I pray for those who are hurting. Father, I ask for your comfort to come and overwhelm them in such a way that they see your loving hand in their lives. Father God, we ask that you give us the strength to continue to stand firm in our faith and to continue to fight for what you fought for in this place, in this world. And I pray, Father, that you would continue to work through the Spirit as we are called to draw near to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue um, today with our message about forging meaningful relationships. And I'm just going to tell you that it will take effort. Now, isn't it frustrating to you when in a relationship you are the only person that puts all the effort in making that relationship meaningful, in making that relationship grow? It can be very frustrating the relationship is meaningful to you, and sometimes it seems like because of the lack of effort from the other person, may not seem that meaningful to that person. And you may have heard this before, and you may know this already, but it takes two. It takes two to make a relationship meaningful, but it also takes acknowledgement. It also takes intentionality. Imagine if every day the person that you are in a relationship with just once a day would come to you and say something like this, I see how much you do for us. Thank you. How can I help you? I can guarantee you that if we started practicing even that one little sentence where you acknowledge the effort that the other person is putting in that relationship and you show gratitude and then you put yourself in a place where you participate so that you can reciprocate that effort, that relationship is going to grow exponentially. It takes effort to be attentive and notice things that others do. It takes effort to point it out and express gratitude. It takes effort to be involved and participate. It's not easy. For meaningful relationships to take place, it will take a lot of work. It will take a lot of determination. Now, in previous weeks, we also spoke about how our, our relationships, if we are trying to build meaningful relationships, our relationship with God has to be included in the picture. 
So we don't paint relationships. We don't create relationships on an empty canvas. God is already in that canvas, and we simply add on to that as something that reflects the relationship that is already painted in that canvas for us. Then we spoke about conflict and how conflict can help us bond and forge those relationships stronger, but we're also called not to create conflict. And last week, Pastor Michelle talked about um, the necessary sacrifices, how much you would need to sacrifice and what needs to take place for us to truly give space uh, for the other um, and put ourselves in service for others. And there's surely more you can speak into this topic, but just wanted to wrap up our series um, talking about the effort that it takes to forge meaningful relationships. And I know that it's becoming more challenging um, as, if it wasn't cha- uh, as if it wasn't challenging already. It's becoming pretty challenging when we now have literally a buffet of topics that could bring division into relationships today, nowadays. Um, and it has been affecting so many relationships with close families and relatives and friends and just brothers and sisters, and sometimes even with our own self, the complications of that relationship has also been um, raised. It was never meant to be complicated. As we build meaningful relationships, it was never meant to be complicated. God is for relationship, but there is someone who is obviously against it, that doesn't care about relationships and will do anything to allow for those relationships to be divided or to be destroyed. And the barriers that disrupt um, the peace between those relationships are not new. The moment that sin entered the world, um, it gave fertile ground for those barriers to be raised up that sin becomes a common denominator for pretty much everything that comes in division between me and my brother and sister and that complicates relationships. If you go back to Genesis in chapter 3, right after Adam and Eve were kicked out, Cain and Abel are introduced. They're the sons of Adam and Eve. And both have to offer sacrifices to God. And as soon as God commands Abel's sacrifice and doesn't look with favor on Cain's sacrifice, boom, a barrier of jealousy is erected. There's already sin in the world. And that barrier is so thick that Cain is not able to see Cain is not able to see Abel um, as a brother anymore, but as someone that needs to be eliminated. And that's how toxic that barrier became. And so he moves on to action and kills his own brother. The sad part of that story is that even though he eliminated his brother, the barrier didn't go away. He still had to deal with that barrier of jealousy. You may have barriers that you have built up with other people. Even if those people all of a sudden, whatever those people might be to you, were all gone, it wouldn't fix it. You would still have to deal with that barrier. Sin becomes that common denominator for so many barriers that we put up today. So God, though, doesn't let that narrative continue. He intervenes and he comes and he restores peace by showing mercy first to Cain and letting him live. And God restores peace by showing grace through Seth's birth by giving Adam and Eve another son. And you can understand that as this narrative of God continues, that he is absolutely for relationship. He's absolutely for relationship. We mess up, and God keeps coming at us with his grace. If he's not for relationship, we wouldn't see God's grace. But because he's for relationship, we see God's grace day after day after day, chasing us with his relentless love because he wants that with us with his creation. And stories like these continue throughout scripture. 
And due to our history, we get now to Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll be talking a little bit about that context, where we are asked to make every effort to preserve the unity in the church, the body of Christ, with the peace that ties us together. So let's read. If you are following us at home, or you can view it, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 to, three, two to 6, it reads like this. It says, Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love, and make an effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties us together. You are one body, one Spirit, just as God also called you in one hope. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Paul lays it out very clearly in Ephesians chapter 1 through 3 when pointing out the differences between Jews and Gentiles, but also points out what ties them together as one and what brings them together as one under Christ's lordship. Now in chapter 4 and onward, Paul will exhort both parties, both groups, to continue to cultivate that unity, to keep building relationships with no buts. There had to be a tremendous effort for the Jewish people to accept the Gentiles as one body because they come from so diverse backgrounds, their diet is different, their culture is different, their upbringing is so different, their worldview is very different. But Paul is very good at bringing those two groups together and bringing a common worldview, a common culture where it allows them to unite in peace. And so that is, has to be reciprocated. And Gentiles also have to make an effort because Jews are so different, to live at peace with their Jewish brothers and sisters. There had to be an effort on both sides to accept and love Gentiles, to accept and love Jews as they share the same body, as they share the same spirit, same hope, same Lord, same faith, same baptism, and same God. You see, neither Jews nor Gentiles produced this community. And that's what Paul is trying to get this message across. You didn't make this community. You didn't produce this new, communi this new community, but rather it came to you as a gift, both to Jew and to Gentile. It came to them as a gift of God's grace to redeem all people and to bring them as one under God's kingdom. So as God is bringing all people from so many diverse back backgrounds into one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one hope, one baptism, one God, we begin to realize that this is just the beginning of a process and not the end result. A process where we have received, each and every one of us, gifts that we ought to use and make every effort in using it so that we can continue to cultivate meaning in our relationships as we encourage one another to Christ-likeness. There is no autopilot in the body of Christ where you can just press it and think that everything else will just come together. No, it will take the effort of every individual person to use his or her own gift to bring unity into the body of Christ, every single person. And sometimes the misconception is that, no, it's up to the pastors only. No, it's up to the leaders only or the servants or the members only. No, it's up to all of us, to each in his or her own giftedness, to make a humble effort, to make a gentle effort, a patient effort to accept each other with love and preserve the unity. And this is our calling, according to Scripture, which Paul likes to remind us time after time in almost every letter. But here in chapter 4, he does it again, too. If we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, he begins by saying this. says, Therefore, as a prisoner for the Lord, I encourage you to live as people worthy of the call you received from God. And he continues on to the verses that we read. 
about how we ought to bring unity into the body of Christ. And then jumping into verse 12, it says, His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ. We put every effort into this, and this is our calling. And we put zero effort into whatever might divide this or, or tear it down or destroy it. If it's not going to build each other up, just don't put any effort into it. But transfer that effort into something that will be beneficial for your brother and sister and the body as a whole. How else can I say it? If we try and contextualize it today and with so many different opinions expressed in our social media nowadays, we're living in a time where I think we're putting way too much effort to prove that my point is right and your point is wrong instead of making every effort to prove that God's love is real, to prove that his mercy is real, to prove that his compassion is real, to prove that his grace is real. Imagine if we started putting so much more effort into that which unites us and brings us together and exalts the qualities and the goodness and the faithfulness of God rather than being so limited in our own selfishness and I have to prove that my point is right. That is not a calling as people of God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25, it reads like this. It says, And let us consider each other carefully, carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. Of sparking love and good deeds. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gone into the habit of doing. And you've probably seen this quoted time after time, but not the verses before that and after. And it says, instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. And that is our calling. God is relentless in his purpose for relationship with us. And I hope you know this. And grace proves it day after day. Why would he continue to show me so much grace, to give me what I don't deserve, unless he's really, really interested in me and wants a relationship with me? I guarantee you that God is not lacking in his effort to demonstrate to you how much you are loved. God is not slacking in his effort to show you how valuable you are to him, how much he cares for you. But it will also take effort on our part, on my part, to seek God and forge a meaningful relationship with God, to discover and experience the infinite love of God. Don't expect much meaning from your relationship with God if you're not going to be willing to put any effort back into it. Your adoption into God's family is the beginning of a process. Just as we spoke about how God brings us into this one body, it's the beginning of a process that we get to draw more and more joy from it as we invest generously in cultivating meaningful relationships, whether that be with God, whether that be with one another, or with my spouse, or my brothers and sisters, or my children, or my parents. And I pray sincerely that we make that effort a priority, especially now more than ever, to bring out the beauty of relationships, to bring out the joy of relationships, relationships that feed so much meaning into our existence, meaningful relationships that honestly fill our hearts in such a way that nothing else in this world can. There's nothing else in this world that can replace the satisfaction of having a deep, meaningful relationship with someone. Nothing. And I pray that we may find that first with God. I pray that we may find that as we join a community of believers. I pray that we find that as we each individually, not letting someone else do it for you, but we each individually make every effort to bring unity 
and peace into the body of Christ, a calling that Christ has called us to. And so I encourage you, as God has shown us grace and is relentless in keeping that relationship with us, that we may know how loved we are, I pray that we make every effort relentlessly within the body of Christ and those around us to show how much they are loved by the love of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for demonstrating to us how much you care about your relationship with us. Yes, you showed us miraculously when you died on that cross and then you came back to life because you said there would be nothing that would come in the way between you and I, not even death, nor any power. Lord, we thank you for the bond of love that you have for us. I pray that we make effort every day to find out and discover just how deep that love goes into our lives and how far it stretches. Lord, we pray that you would give us, Lord, the right perspective and just the right motive and the right heart for us to engage with one another in a way that honors you and glorifies you by putting every effort individually, all of us, in bringing peace and unity and love with one another. Father, help us how to do that so that we as a community may shine like a lighthouse in this world. Father, we pray for your grace to continue to chase after us, Lord, and we thank you for that every day. We pray, Father, that your spirit may continue to give us boldness and courage to step out of our comfort zones, Lord, and to reach out with your love. Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we end our time of service online, we thank you once again for joining us. And just a quick reminder that today at 6 p.m., we'll be having our drive-in worship service in our parking lot area on 120 North Ash in Escondido. And there will be ushers to guide you as to where to locate um, and park your vehicle. This will not be a recorded event uh, because it will be the same message that you heard today. But these are for people who um, chose to uh, join us in person uh, within their cars and not online. So we hope that you can join us and we pray um, that God will bless you this week. That God will continue to show you his heart. And know that you are seen. Know that you are loved. Know that there is a place in God's heart where you dwell with so much love and that you are not alone. And so may the grace of God and the communion of the Spirit and the love of Christ be with you now and throughout the week until we see each other again. Have a blessed week.